hope you had a wonderful Christmas. How many, uh, how many open your gifts on Christmas Eve? Okay. How many open your, Chris, your gifts on Christmas Day? Hey. You didn't stack it with more than one, did you? Got them all the same? Hey, you're a detail guy, aren't you? I like that. We're not going to do it quite yet. But is it okay, honey, to sit it right here? Oh, I know, right behind this thing right here. Pressure living with her. But I turned out pretty good. She keeps sh uh, r rounding off my rough edges. Um, so some of you opened up on Christmas Day, some of you on uh, Christmas Eve. <clears throat> Vicki and I are still um, waiting. Our family comes in on Tuesday. So we, uh, we just, um, we don't know if we're going to open Tuesday night or Wednesday night because we got, uh, during Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we have nine hockey games that we have to figure out with our family. So that's fun. But um, so our, our um, so we start celebrating on Tuesday and we'll end up on Sunday because we don't want just one day. So we'll have a lot of time together, a lot of fun. Our kids from Kansas City will be coming in and we'll be celebrating. Um, I was gonna ask somebody that's really young, what was your favorite gift? Nobody's volunteering, so. What was it? When you were 11. Some gifts we remember for a long time, don't we? So um, <clears throat> when our boys were little and our church was little, um, we tried everything we could to grow the church. I drove the Sunday school. I drove the bus every Sunday um, to pick up people and um, have a picture of that old bus. It was uh, an old relic. It was, ba it, was bad. it was in bad shape when I bought it. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys, we moved everybody over here. We don't want to give you special treatment. <clears throat> wow, now you're right in front. Thank you. So anyway, we, um, we, I would pick up people with this little bus that we bought, and uh, I didn't realize what God was doing in everything that we do for him. Little things happen. Today... There are two people in heaven that rode on that bus. There are two people in full-time ministry that rode on that bus. And we uh, are thankful. We don't always realize what God is doing. And God is always doing more than we think he is. And um, we don't always realize how what you do affects your kids. Um, but our kids are watching everything we do. And, and so um, our first, when my son was... Um, about four or four or five, we were, uh, Vicki and I would, I would take the boys and we'd buy Vicki a gift and then she would take the boys and they'd buy me a gift and <clears throat> I was unwrapping my gift and Jason, my f uh, four or five year old said, <clears throat> Dad, I was gonna buy you a bus but I couldn't figure out how to get it under the tree. <laughs> the biggest problem was wasn't buying it, the biggest problem was getting it under the tree. And then, uh, so that was kind of fun. And uh, he wasn't so fond of that bus though, when our car broke down when he was in seventh grade and I had to take the church van with the church name on it to drop him off at school. He said, Dad, just drop me off a couple blocks away <laughs> and I'll, I'll walk. I said, well, are you ashamed of our bus? No, 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 not at all. But uh, he didn't want us to be dropped off there. So a year later, Vicki and I were did our routine. I took the boys, and, and then she took the boys. And <clears throat> we were in this Hallmark shop, and uh, Kirby, he likes to do the spectacular. He, he saw this uh, um, crystal paper weight and um, he saw it laying there and it was on a velvet 
cloth, and he started looking at it, and he wanted to, he wanted, I think this is what, kind of what it looked like, and he wanted to buy that for Vicky. And uh, I said, no, we can't buy that, and so we go back and forth, and I can't get him to quit crying, so we find Vicky, that's always a key, if your kids are crying, find the mom, and uh, we get there, and she's um, wondering, what in the world is he crying about? And he said, I wanted to buy you a diamond, but Dad won't let me. <laughs> so he goes over, he said, well, let's see it. So we go to the Hallmark, and here's this big paperweight laying there. And he said, and the rag even goes with it. <laughs> it was laying on this velvet thing. And so kids uh, are fun. And uh, as Vicki and I look back, that might have been the best gifts we ever received. We didn't receive them, but the kids were excited about it. They were extravagant gifts by pure-hearted kids. And you know, God gave an extravagant gift when he looked down and saw how, what shape the world was in. Uh, we celebrate that gift. He decided to send his only son to come into the world. Isaiah prophesied that um, the Messiah coming would be a time of celebration. To let, and let, let, let me read it for you from Isaiah chapter 9. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. And those who live in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. The next verse goes on to describe how the light dawns. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at a harvest time and as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. The, mes the message translates it like this. A festival joy the joy of great celebration, sharing rich gifts and warm greetings. When you study the scripture, you find out that uh, receiving and giving of gifts was part of many of the Old Testament um, experiences, and they always um, kind of blew them up bigger than we maybe thought we would, they, they should, or we do today. And in the book of Esther, um, if you remember, they were going to kill all of the Jews, and Esther goes in before the king, and um, Mordecai had sent her in. Here's what he wrote about that. Mordecai wrote of all, the, uh, all this down and sent copies to all the Jews in all King Xerxes' provinces, <coughs> calling for an annual celebration on the 14th and 15th day of Adar as the occasion when the Jews got relief from their enemies. The month in which their sorrow turned to joy, mourning somersaulted into a holiday for, party, for uh, parties and fun and laughter and sending and receiving of presents and giving of gifts to the poor. Uh, this has been the Old and New Testament church's practice for over the years. They did it. Uh, what started uh, then became a tradition and continued to practice uh, the practice of Mordecai had written to them. Um, I don't know if you guys have um, traditions in your home, but most of us do. Some of us have traditions. We don't know our traditions. We've just been doing them for a long time. And so um, Vicki and I uh, were, by the way, if you're going to start something, be careful, because you can never end it, probably. Vicki and I went out to, uh, to um, breakfast at the... Uh, original pancake a year ago on Christmas Eve. Um, it's about yeah, a year ago, last year we did. And we go in and sit down and we enjoyed our breakfast and was going to pay for it and someone said, or the waitress said, it's already been paid for. Well, that's always nice. So we looked around and tried to find uh, someone that we saw. We didn't know anybody. The waitress said, I'll show you who did it. And so they, we kind of have to peek around the corner. She said, it was that family over there. So we go th to tell them thank you. And they told us that every Christmas Eve, we go out for breakfast. And then we pick, a, our boys pick a table. And uh, we pay for that table. It's kind of the Christmas uh, tradition that they had. 
And uh, the boys picked us. They saw how nice looking Vicky was. And they, and they chose our table. We don't know why they chose us. We don't know what the reason was, but they said when their parents said, when you walked in the door, the boys said, we want that couple. Um, incredible tradition to start. And, and uh, perhaps um, one of the traditions Vicki and I have had is we try to give an uh, unusual tip on Christmas Eve to, uh, to our waitress. So um, we discover that uh, some of these things happen and they establish a tradition that ends for a long time. I mentioned, or that goes on for a long time. I mentioned last week that we have a crazy tradition in our house. <coughs> Here's how it'll go down this week. The kids come, everybody comes, and uh, everyone gets approximately the same amount of money in their gifts. Now, there, this, there are gonna be 11 gifts, I know because I had to carry them up and down the steps, but 11 gifts for nine people. So that's approximately 99 gifts, if you, if you multiply it out. And everyone gets the same amount of money and everyone gets the same number. So to do that, our kids have, our grandkids have expensive tastes. They want big, expensive presents. So Vicki has to get gum and, and uh, different kinds of uh, candy bars and stuff to fill in the end so everybody gets the same amount. Now, she's really strict about that. If you get $50 total, everybody's going to get $50 total. So that's kind of fun. The kids sort out the gifts. They go to the tree, get the, go under every branch, every tree. And we have three trees in our house, so they're finding all these gifts, and they're bringing them to the place where we're going to open them. <clears throat> and um, so they don't miss any gifts. And they have it all figured out. Uh, then we'll pause and read after the gifts are all distributed, we'll pause and read the Christmas story. It reminds us the reason for why we're there. <clears throat> we have prayer and then um, all chaos breaks loose. The youngest gets to choose what color because every gift, all 10 gifts, all, all 11 or all nine gifts are the same color for gift number one. They're all the same color for gift number two. And so the kids get to pick the color and then uh, from the youngest up <clears throat> to the oldest. So there's, um, you have to have enough paper to wrap everything the same. I don't get involved in that. I'm absolutely having a nervous breakdown when I just watch, so I just stay away. And uh, here's what I've noticed. They never just leave, they, they never leave one present under the tree. Although I did notice there was one under here that someone missed yesterday, their celebration, so I'm gonna bring it out. In fact, means it's here. This will probably be the gift we give away at the end. Now, honey, should I put this in the middle or over? Okay, you don't care? Okay, I'm gonna put that right there because it's kind of, we're talking about gifts today. And so um, they never leave a present with their name on it unopened. However, uh, it's not true in life and it's not true spiritually. There are many gifts that are never received simply because uh, they remain unopened. I wanna talk to you a little bit about the spiritual uh, ideas of that a little bit later. But it's hard to believe, but there are millions of unclaimed packages that never make it to their intended destination. Those unclaimed gifts end up at the recovery center. Now we're not talking about Metro Hope, not that kind of recovery, but the kind of recovery where they try to get the gift to go to the right place, even though it's been uh, delayed or isn't at the right place at this time. So the Mail Recovery Center works to unite the undelivered letters to the, and the package to the place where it was supposed to go. Uh, there are a lot of them. In recent years, they discovered 88 million uh, undelivered gifts. Uh, 
12 million of them were $25 or more. And uh, the male recovery group only got 2.5 million of those to the right place. Now, my Minnesota math says that 9.5 million gifts that were $25 or more never made it to the right place. Um, how, how does that happen? Uh, a few years ago, Vicki uh, Vicky likes to order online. She had a $150 gift that was delivered to our house. The post office gave us the signal that it was there. Vicki went out, it wasn't there. So being a, um, <clears throat> if you don't mind, I just stepped on my shoestring. I'm gonna trip if I don't do this. Isn't it fun to watch someone fix their shoestring on the platform? Uh, Vicki uh, goes down to the post office and says, it never came. They said, yes, in your neighborhood, a lot of gifts have been uh, stolen off the front porch. And so um, you can turn it into your insurance company, uh, but we can't do anything about it. And the mail carrier came by the next day and said, I delivered it to you. And the reason I remember, I love your wife, I love Vicki's wreath. She didn't call her Ricky, Vicky, but I love the wreath she had on the door, so that's how I remembered I delivered it. So sometimes packages are stolen. Sometimes they're delivered in the wrong place. Last year we had that happen. Vicki purchased a sweater that my granddaughter uh, wanted, and so uh, they said it was delivered, but we didn't get it. Now Vicki doesn't just let stuff like that pass. So um, sometimes, I don't know if your male people are like ours, but sometimes we get the neighbors and the neighbors get ours. So Vicki says, um, I wanna write a note to every neighbor so on, she tapes a little note on their mailbox and says, um, hi neighbor, I'm wondering if any of you might have had a package misdelivered to you this last week. It's from American Eagle. It contained a sweater that my granddaughter really wanted. Her, so, her uh, size is sold out so we can't replace it. I received notification that it was delivered yesterday. I'm hoping that you simply delivered to the wrong place. If you happen to have our gift, would you please bring it back, Vicki St. John, and then she put our address. The next day, two little boys with a big smile on their face come with the present. It had been delivered to the wrong place. Well, that's how mail gets mixed up. Um, the, the, uh, however, a lot, there are a lot of reasons that packages don't end up. Sometimes you can't read the writing. Sometimes it's the wrong address. Sometimes people move and they don't give a forwarding address. Uh, some people <laughs> don't necessarily want to put out the effort to go down to some place and pick it up. And some people don't like the person that sent it to them. So they don't want it anyway. But anyway, um, I want to talk about the spiritual analogy here. Scripture tells us that God looked down on how bad the world was, dark, uh, lost, sinful, and uh, wanted to do something about it. So he sent his only son as a gift. And um, in doing so, he packaged a gift that put your name and my name on it. On Christmas Day, that was yesterday, at 1.57 a.m., I don't know about you, but I like to get up a couple times during the night, just walk over to a little room uh, close to our bedroom, and then come back. <laughs> At 1.57, I, I thought, this is Christmas Day. I just stood, stood by my bed and said, thank you, Lord for coming for me 2,000 years ago. Um, I was just overwhelmed that on Christmas Day, almost the first thing I ever thought of that day, I was reminded that Jesus came just for me. 
And he came just for you. He came for everyone in the world. And uh, so um, Vicki and I uh, have a gift right here. Let's imagine that that gift has your name on it and it contains God's love and God's blessing and God's grace for you. Um, and it comes to us through Jesus Christ. Um, it's a gift waiting for you. Uh, it's the most incredible, valuable gift that you could ever receive. And uh, we have a little video here that <laughs> uh, we want you to look at. I think it's going to work. Christmas presents are exciting. Do you remember what you'd say is the best gift you've ever received at Christmas? I asked my kids this question, and here's what they said. My six-year-old loved her little talkie doll that could talk, blink, and not much else. It cost a whopping $110 after tax, and it lasted for a solid eight months before it found its way to the back of her closet. My nine-year-old said his favorite was the popular fantasy book series, six books in all, each getting progressively longer. The set cost $58 and lasted eight weeks before it lived its final dust-filled existence on a shelf. Now my tween loved the Brainy Putty collection that cost $32 and lasted a measly eight days before it went to live in our carpet. Finally, my teenage son wanted the ultimate drone with a 4K camera. It cost the most and lasted the shortest amount of time. I'd like to say it lasted eight minutes, but no, it was eight seconds, which is only impressive in bull riding. As exciting as those gifts are, what if there was a gift at Christmas that was far better? In fact, so much better that it makes these look like, well, toys. What if this gift was worth so much that no one could buy it for you, nor could you afford it? What if it was something of extreme value, like, say, life itself? And what if this gift was given through the birth of a baby who became our paid in full? That's the gift offered to all. It costs us nothing, him everything. It lasts just a bit longer than eight seconds, eight days, eight weeks, or even eight months. It lasts forever. Yeah, it really is a gift none of us deserve. Gift God gave out of the great love he had for us. Paul wrote uh, to, a Tim to Timothy and he said this, we had nothing to do with it, it was all his idea, a gift prepared for us in Jesus long before we knew anything about it. Gift of eternal life, given to you and given to me. It's a gift prepared for you, it's a gift prepared for me, and it's uh, got your name on it. You just have to pick it up. Have you picked up your gift that Jesus gave and that God sent years ago. To borrow a phrase from the old Kodak commercial, you find that Jesus is the gift that keeps on giving. And once you find salvation, so many other things come with it. And it's, it's an amazing thing. I trust that you found this to be true. My prayer is that each of you have found the words of Apostle Paul, uh, from Apostle Paul, who says this, May all the gifts and benefits that come from God our Father and Master Jesus Christ be yours. I want to close with this. Uh, God designed the church to, be a, <clears throat> to operate as a recovery center. It exists to re reunite people uh, with their unclaimed gifts. And... Um, we get to live in a world where we get to distribute the gift of love that Jesus gave us to our neighbors, to our work partners, to our friends. And I can't help but wonder this morning if there might be an unclaimed present with your name on it that you haven't received yet. So um, let's bow our heads for a moment. And um, you might say, Pastor, I've never 
ask Christ to come into my life and I've ever, never received the gift that he made for me, I want you to pray for me this morning. I'd just like to see your hand. I'd like you to pray for me. I've never claimed my gift. Never claimed my gift. I'm looking everywhere. Okay, we've all received our gift, apparently. And that's exciting. Uh, I just want to pray, Lord, I thank you that the gift of love, the gift of grace, the gift of mercy has come to all of us. And I praise you for it. Thank you for giving us grace and mercy and love and joy and hope in Jesus' name. So we continue our celebrating by looking forward to the new year. And I want to leave you with this verse from Nehemiah. Go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks and uh, send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is holy to the Lord. Do not grieve for the joy of the Lord is our strength. Uh, one more thing before we leave. In here, oh yeah, that, over here, right behind here. In here is a um, $50 bill. Vicki and I want to give to someone. You still have one to put in? Is it yours? Okay, we got to find someone we trust to do this. How about, how about this guy back here with a baseball hat in New York? You want to come and draw? I'll get this mixed up. Can you read? Can you read cursive? Oh, no. Then I better hold it up high. Here you go. Who is it? behind you. I thought, I didn't know it was yours. <laughs> hey, isn't that nice? Thank you. No, this is, we're not going to end the way we usually do, so thank you for playing, though. It's fine. Um, I have one more gift idea that I want to talk about. I've been calling a bunch of churches to see if they would give some money to help, let's save Summit. And so um, um, I thought Vicky and I would do something. And so we're going to we're going to do twenty five hundred dollars for. And the reason we're raising money is so we can pay for our staff that we don't have yet. We're going to hire. So Vicky and I are going to give uh, fifty dollars a week for 50 weeks, 2,500 bucks. Or we can give 300 next month and then 200 a month for 11 months if you add all that up. So I was telling Mike Shields about it. How many know that Mike likes to one-up you? <laughs> I love that guy. I said, hey, Mike, tell you what we're doing. We're trying to raise some money, asking a bunch of churches to help us. and and." Um, Mike, Mike almost starts crying. He said, oh, I love Summit. I love Summit. And um, he said, Mona and I are going to give 5000 I said, really? He said, yeah, we're going to send it today. Well, I don't know where he gets his money, but I don't have 2500 that I could give you today, but I can do it over the next year. 
So we're not going to put any pressure on you, but you can find one of these envelopes in the back if you want to do something over the next year for staff. We will not say no. And so you say, well, why did you tell what you're going to give? Because people told me when I started raising money, if you don't give yourself, you'll never raise any. So I'm going to give. And I'm excited about it. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Monday, all, all three meals on Monday and breakfast on Tuesday. Then the next week, all, all three meals on Wednesday and breakfast on Thursday. I'm going to fast and pray that God will do unbelievable miracles for Summit Church and we'll have all the money we need for staff. And so join me in fasting and praying if you can. And join me in giving if the Lord puts it on your heart. If the Lord doesn't put it on your heart, don't give. Now, I did tell the search committee that I was going to do this. And you know what the Lord said? Don't give it to Summit. Give it to me and let Summit distribute it. <laughs> so I'm giving this to the Lord. I'm not giving it to the church. And you get to distribute it. Lord, I thank you. Give us a great year. Thank you for all the gifts that we received. And thank you for the privilege of us giving to you in Jesus' name. Thank you. Take your gift home. I don't know how you did that. <laughs> but you were honest right there, weren't you? Yeah, he did it. He did it right. I told him I Okay. Have a good year. God bless you. Savior is born.